we're going to look at controlling line weights for the working drawings. Unfortunately in Revit uh, most of our time is focused on the modeling but uh, equally important and sometimes forgotten is the line weights of the working drawings themselves so that they read properly. If you look at this wall section that I've got right here we want it to be clear in line weight what is in section what is in elevation and what is a material indication. So if I zoom in a little bit, this is a 1 to 20 uh, wall section and you can see that it's very clear what's in section, what is back in elevation, this door, and what a uh, material indication line weight is. Likewise, as we change scales and go to a 1 to 10 detail of the similar area, I want to look at that and be sure that everything continues to read well at all scales. So again, the material indications and lines in elevation are very light. Things in section are very dark, very noticeable. And we can go to an extreme scale of 1 to 5, and we still need those things to read well. Autodesk has a method, uh, uh, Revit has a method of dealing with that by having line weights actually changeable from scale to scale. This allows us to skip the profile line step that we did in two-dimensional drafting by drawing in our profile line, we can eliminate that step if we control the way objects are viewed in section, in elevation, and from scale to scale. There's three basic things that you need to look at. Let's start with the Manage tab and Additional Settings. Underneath that, we need to go to Line Styles because we're going to add some of our own line styles that we use for two-dimensional drafting. So if you just expand the lines button. I've added these five line weights. These are our common five line weights that we use in two-dimensional drafting. And we've used them before. Heavy, primary, secondary, thin, and fine. I put a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on them just so that they group themselves together on this list. Then, once we create them, and it's simple to create, we just go in New, type in the new name. Uh, for example, 0, 5, Heavy. I would type that here and say OK. I'm going to cancel out of that because it already exists. Then it will show itself on the list and then we adjust its line weight. The line weights are, should be the five line weights that we use in two-dimensional drafting, heavy being the heaviest. So we're going to set it to line weight number five. Primary is number four, secondary is three, thin and fine. They are all show up in black and solid. There may be some other line weights that you want to uh, create at this time, such as AVB. We want to make maybe our own line for AVB, and it should be a primary line weight, which is line weight number four. If you look up here, primary is number four line weight. That's what our AVB should be, and it's dashed, not solid. So we can make up all and control all of the line types that we need under line styles. Once you're happy with that, click OK. So that's the first step. The second step is line weights. We've created the styles. Now let's look at line weights. We've assigned line weights 1 through 5, are the, are the 5 that we're focusing on, and we've got the different line weights at each scale. Uh, I've added this scale 1 to 5. A default template just has 1 to 10 as its smallest. You just simply go in Add, scroll down, pick the scale you want, and say OK to that. So uh, I've added an extra scale 1 to 5 for large like window frame details, blow up details. So if we look from the 1 to 100 and up, uh, if I highlight these for you, the uh, line weights here, these five line weights stay the same throughout. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are exactly the same for scales 1 to 100, 1 to 50, and 1 to 20. And they're similar to what we did in two-dimensional AutoCAD. The lightest line weight, uh, called fine, is 0.1 millimeter. Thin is 0.18, that's number 2. Number 3 is our secondary, 0.25, and number 3 our number four is our primary, 0.35, and then our fifth line weight is heavy, 0.5. So those are already defaults in Revit. What we're going to change is simply these ones right here. We're just going to change these. The number four and five line weights for larger details such as 1 to 10 and 1 to 5. What I would like you to do is change right here the number four primary line weight. When we are in 1 to 20, it's our standard, 0.35. 
when you switch to a 1 to 10 detail, I want that line to read heavier. By making this number 4 line weight read heavier at 0.5, it will take the place of the profile line. We won't need to draw in the profile line to get a similar effect and it will be automated within Revit. So we don't have to trace a profile line in. Likewise, as we skip up to uh, 1 to 5 scale, which is a very large detail, we need that line to show up even more. So we're going to enhance it by going to a 0.7. Notice that the 1, 2, and 3 line weights do not change across the board. We need line weights 1 and 2 and 3 to be the same line weight so that there's major contrast between material indications, for example, and things in section. So really, it's these two lines that we're changing and li line weight number 5, heavy line weight. We're going up from 0.5 as our standard weight. We're going to a 0.7 and then a 1 millimeter. Okay, those are used rarely, but this line weight number four, profile, or pardon me, primary lines number four are for everything in section. Okay, that's really it. If you can adjust those, now we've got uh, control over how our five line weights should print. So once you set that, you say okay to that. Then the final item that we need to look at is object styles. Still under manage tab, look at our object styles. This is where we look at things, uh, the way Revit draws them, their components, how they relate when they're uh, a projection line, meaning back in elevation, or when they're cut meaning in section. So here's an example. Uh, let's go to walls. It's the most obvious walls and floors. If I go to walls, the wall itself, if it's in projection or elevation, it's a one. It's a light line weight. I want major contrast. If it's in section, I want it to be line weight number four. And I just pick a, down the scroll, uh, scroll down the list and pick number four. That's our primary line weight. And that's the way it should be in a wall section. Anything that's in uh, being cut through is a line weight number four. Common edges, that's when we have a sandwich, multiple pieces in an assembly. Those common edges should be one when they're in elevation and four when they're in section. Hidden lines can be a, a, a thin line weight, that's fine. And the wall sweep or cornice again in elevation one in section four. So you need to go through this list and affect anything that you think uh, you might be using. For example, casework needs to be, again, elevation one, section number four. Um, doors, there's a whole bunch of settings there. Anything that is a part of the door that is in section and needs to read, we make sure we put it at a four. So doors in section can be left, this part can be left at a two because this is in plan and it's a two-line door, so they might bleed together if we go too heavy. And you can experiment with all of these. But understand that this is where you go to adjust how Revit treats them, whether they're in elevation or in section. Same thing with floors. The floors would be one and four. Common edges, one and four. Always things in section are four. Hidden lines, again, are never in section, so they're going to be represented at a thin weight, number two, and so on. So you can pop, go through this list and adjust all the settings that you need so that you are in control of how things read when they're in projection or elevation or whether they're uh, cut or in section. Once you're happy with all that, hit OK. Now I'll show you an example of that. This is our 1 to 20. I'll go back to it. Our 1 to 20 section reads nice and clean. Our 1 to 10, the lines are a little thicker yet, reads better. We go to 1 to 5 and they're thicker yet, but there's more white space. Really good definition. We don't need to put in that profile line. And still, at a 1 to 100 building section, everything reads fine. We've got heavy lines that are bleeding together, and that's good. We just want to see the assemblies on a building section. So with those three settings, uh, we have control over how the components read in Revit. There's one other thing that we have to adjust. If I go into this detail and I want to put in some two-dimensional drafting, so this is a filled region, so it's a void, it's a hatched area. When I create that hatch, I have to make sure when I'm building it that the perimeter lines, so I'll just highlight them, the perimeter lines are at the appropriate style. So I'll just click on those three. I must have grabbed something else. They are all the appropriate line weight. So where is it here? There they are. Those should all be primary. Okay, we're drawing this two-dimensional void form. It's in section, so the perimeter should be primary. Check, say OK to that, and it reads properly. The material indications are set in the object styles so that they read uh, at a line weight number one.
Uh, likewise, this air vapor barrier, it's one of our new line weights. There's all the line weights that we've created, uh, line styles that we've created, and it's, we've got an AVB that shows up in a primary weight, which is a number four weight, and it's very clear on the drawing. So we're in charge of how all of these things read. The, there is nothing that is left to be automated by Revit that's outside of your control. I want uh, the same attention that we spend on modeling sp to be spent on the two-dimensional drawings so that they read the way a proper architectural drawing should read.